Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I've been running my Steam Curator page since the start of the Steam Curator system, and I've had a reasonable amount of success with it. I mean, it's the top curator on Steam by a pretty significant margin. But of course, a lot of people don't use the Curator system at all, and honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed with Valve, who hasn't put any effort whatsoever since the launch of the system in last year to actually update it or provide new features or anything like that. So, it's a little bit annoying, but... There was one thing that I thought maybe it could be used for. I think you're probably all very well aware at this point that I'm an advocate for 60 frames per second minimum in games on PC. I don't think there's an excuse, and you can come up with all manner of different things. The good old cinematic vision and movie-like thing, which of course makes no sense and is easily debunked. I mean, if you wanted a movie-like experience, why not run it at 24 frames per second? The frame rate that movies are actually run at. And secondly... It's not a movie, so it doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. So there's that, and then there are some programming reasons. It's like, well, you know, the game logic is tied to the frame rate. Yes, but that's something you shouldn't have done in the first place. You know, examples such as Need for Speed Rivals, and quite a few indie games as well, tie their frame rates to the game logic, and it ends up causing problems if you try and unlock it. There are, of course, titles like South Park. Some people can argue that that's okay, because they're trying to, as closely as possible, emulate the look of the show. Although, I think you could also argue that even running it at 60 probably wouldn't break that. You know, that doesn't necessarily affect the way the game is animated. You know, that's an art decision. That's not something that's tied to the frame rate necessarily. But here's the thing. Despite all of those reasons, you can come up with any reason you like. Most people, I would speculate, when given the choice, would prefer 60 over 30. And that's the thing about PC, isn't it? Unlike console, you get the choice. It's very rare that you get to choose between 30 and 60 FPS on console. I mean, Last of Us on PS4 was one of the only examples of that recently. But on PC, you can play it at whatever your hardware can cope with. Assuming, of course, that the game isn't locked to 30. Now, this is where the problem arises, because there are actually quite a lot of games on PC that are locked to 30. Some of them very old, but some of them surprisingly new. And that can be a real problem for people. It can negatively affect their ability to enjoy the game. Personally, I'm so used to high frame rates that I just can't play games at 30 FPS anymore. It's just not acceptable, I think, in 2015 to have games running at that frame rate. I shouldn't have to explain to any of you the importance of a high frame rate. I mean, you're PC gamers, you should know by now, and I've waxed lyrical enough about it. So let me get to the point. So, Valve could have possibly solved this with the tag system. Now, if I were to go to a game like, say, Token and Kiwami, for instance, I could look at the tags and I could maybe add 30 FPS. What would happen if I add 30 FPS? Well, here's the thing. It turns out 30 FPS is a banned tag. If you try and add that, it doesn't actually display. During the first few days of the tagging system on Steam, there was quite a lot of abuse. There were a bunch of troll tags, there were a bunch of offensive tags. So, we had a rampage, really, from Valve as they banned a bunch of different tags. But what they also did is they banned things like 30 FPS, which is really strange. I believe they also banned FOV-related tags. Which is kind of ridiculous, because you'd think they would be useful. Now, Valve evidently does not want the system used to give information like that. They want it to be used, for the most part, for genre information. Now, you might think that's a valid opinion, but simultaneously, I think that that deprives users of a very useful system that can quickly share those pieces of information. So, what other options do we have? Well, we could rely on Steam reviews, but as we're well aware, those are unreliable. Often, the top-rated reviews for games are ridiculous memes and funny stories and so on and so forth. So what else could we do? Well, we could set up a Steam Curator, and that's exactly what I've done. So I've set up a second Steam Curator by the name of the Framerate Police. Yes, I found that kind of amusing. And there is one purpose for this, only one, and that is to document all of the games on Steam that are locked to 30 FPS, and if it's possible to unlock it, give basic information and the recommendation as how to do it. Now, there's no subjective opinion on this anywhere. I, I was thinking about it, and then I decided, you know what, let's keep this purely objective. Let's not say things like, oh, in this case, it's probably okay, and so on and so forth. No, keep the objective information purely objective. So if it's got a 30 FPS lock, it goes on the curator. If the FPS lock can be fixed by an INI tweak or some kind of external program, list that. That's it. That's the sole purpose of it. And hopefully... 
if this curator gets enough followers, it's going to start popping up on the store pages. It's probably not going to be the first curator result, but we've created a logo that's very easy to see, even if it's among the small little curator logos in the corner. It basically says 30 FPS. So if you keep an eye on this, and of course, if you follow this curator, what it's going to do is it's going to warn you of games that are locked at 30 FPS, and as a result, you can avoid them. And if you don't care about that, well, no harm done to you. Simple as that. You know, you can merely just ignore it. I really do think that Valve has had a very hands-off approach with developers when it comes to information that's posted on their pages. I mean, we've had a wide variety of games, for instance, that have no keyboard and mouse support and didn't have that properly listed or really didn't run well with keyboard and mouse at all. We've got games that didn't properly list whether or not they were local multiplayer or online multiplayer. And we've had games that have literally listed false information in the past, especially on the early access system. Now, I personally think that things like no FOV options, 30 FPS lock, these should be things that are stated on the store page as a warning. They should be properly labeled. They're not. And Valve doesn't enforce it, and Valve doesn't keep an eye on anything like that. And developers, of course, certainly are not going to voluntarily reveal that information. I mean, why would they? They don't have to. So that's the best idea that I could come up with. Make a curator page and just say, look, if it's 30 FPS, we put it on the list. If it's not 30 FPS, it doesn't go on the list. Simple, objective, fact. No judgment, nothing along those lines. Now, if you wish to help this project out, then what you can do is you can join the curator's group. Now, I've put the links in the description below this video. If you want to see the curator and follow it, then there's a link there. And if you want to join the group, there's also a link. And we have some forum threads going where people are posting 30 FPS games. And they're also posting evidence. And if there's a fix for it, they're posting a link to that as well. So I am individually vetting each game, checking the sources. And if indeed it checks out, it goes on the curator and it's listed at 30 FPS. And if developers happen to fix their game to remove the 30 FPS lock, then they're also welcome to post in the group and we'll get that verified and fixed for them as well. Simple as that, really. You know, just a little service that is hopefully trying to help people out to avoid purchasing games that are locked at 30 FPS if they don't want to play games at 30. And I think on PC, that's totally reasonable. I think that you should absolutely always have that choice in all circumstances. And if developers are not willing to reveal that information, then I think a third party has to step in in order to make that information easily accessible. I don't think that people should have to go Googling to find out whether a game runs at 30. That's ridiculous. You know, it should be on the store page. And we can make that happen. If the curator gets enough followers, then it will start popping up on people's pages, even if they don't follow the curator. And of course, if you do follow it, then it's going to be on all those pages pretty much by default. So feel free to follow the curator, folks, if you so desire. Big thanks to those who have already got involved in the project. We've uncovered quite a lot of 30 FPS games already, but we won't stop until we've got everything on Steam. And that's going to require a lot of people. It takes a village. Let me put it that way. All right, folks, my name is Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.